For more on that chemical agent, we're joined by Raymond Zelinskis. He is a chemical weapons expert based in California. One analyst uh, says if this was used on Kim Jong-nam, that a number of tests would be needed to make sure that no more harm was done to other people in a crowded airport. So give me your theory on how it was administered so the, those delivering it didn't become victims of VX or other people around the area. Well, if, uh, if it's indeed VX, uh, it couldn't have been pure VX because it would have killed the assassins as well as the victim, uh, Kim. So my hypothesis is that you have what they call a binary system. What I mean by binary is that the assassins had two types of chemicals, one in each hand. And these uh, chemicals are not that toxic, but when you put them together, that then has a chemical reaction that ends up with the VEX. And I think that's what happened here. Give me an overview, overview if you will, uh, Raymond, because I know you, you know a lot about this. Uh, we mentioned how it was used by Saddam Hussein to kill thousands in a Kurdish city in 1988. But talk to me about VEX, its history, who's used it in the past, who has access to it today? Well, actually, Hussein did not use VEX. He used something called sarin which is uh, also a nerve agent, but uh, VX is much, much more toxic than sarin by at least 10 times. So as far as we know, nobody's ever used VX uh, in, uh, for any reason, except now, of course, if the Koreans, North Koreans have for this assassination purpose. So well, let's take that a step further. There's been so much reporting on the DPRK becoming a nuclear power, possibly. But what about concerns about mastering chemical or biological agents? Well, something that we're really, really worried about. Uh, North Korea has a very advanced uh, chemical industry and certainly chemical laboratories too. So it wouldn't be difficult for them to actually uh, produce any of these nerve agents, including VEX. So what they're showing now if, uh, is that they have it. And before we were just uh, security experts like myself, we thought that they probably had chemical weapons, but now we're pretty sure that they, they do have chemical weapons. Of course, now, is it possible that they might now try to come up with a third weapon of mass destruction, which is biological weapons? They haven't done that as far as we know to date. Uh, so, Raymond, talk to me about in your community. Is this something that's been discussed quite a bit uh, prior to this attack? Well, the nerve, I mean, the neural, the uh, the atomic, in, uh, the atomic weapons and, and it's been, nuclear weapons have been really been, the, everybody's been worried about that. And then the, the missiles that might deliver them over long distances is also been very much of a, of a, a problem that has been, been uh, discussed by us. But now we're also gonna have to work, uh, worry about uh, chemical weapons and possibly biological weapons. Talk to me, uh, we've got about 30 seconds. The terminal itself, do you suspect there's any of this uh, left there or, or was this executed in such a way that there's real no danger there? Oh no, they have to de decontaminate. It's not very difficult to decontaminate. You just need essentially uh, bleach to do it. So, uh, they, but they have to do that because there might be splatters of VEX on the ground or on, on people's uh, clothing, and that could uh, be very, very, uh, well, could be very dangerous for people that to go through the airport.